for us as believers, right, exactly. you know, so, sometimes it can be intimidating or difficult to, um, to evangelize or tell people about Jesus. And this is a great tool just to, to loved ones or friends or colleagues or teammates or the guy who's coming to change the filter on your air conditioning unit. I mean, anybody who you come across. Hello and welcome to Along the Way Life's Journey. I'm your host, Carl Bucciolano. As always, I come to you on a Wednesday and I bring you a great new guest. Well, today is no different. You know, this is February, and that means men and women all over this country are running around like crazy, going to buy love letters and cards to send to their loved ones because of Valentine's Day. Hallmark has made a great industry out of it. But the greatest love letter ever written to mankind, the greatest love letter ever written to mankind, is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we are going to hear from a man today, Josh Richardson, who has recognized the value of that in such a way that he wants to make sure everybody gets a copy of that love letter because it's so important for our salvation. So I welcome you, Josh Richardson. Hey, thank you for having me. And that was an incredible intro. I love it. Well, I love you, brother. I do. Know that. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so... Josh, you're a, a, a businessman, you're a father, you're a husband, you've done all these incredible things in your life, which we won't get into because I know you want to stay modest with that. But I also know that there came a time in your life, like most of us, where you were beating your head against a wall and trying to be a different person and recognizing that you were spinning around in a circle and somebody yep. touched you with the word yep. of God. Yep, absolutely. Well, it was actually, um, you know, unfortunately and fortunately, it was a little worse than than that description, right? I was, um, you know, I was actually saved when I was in junior high and at a Promise Keepers event in 1996. Mm -hmm. And it was an incredible moment. I was there with my father. I answered the altar call. I went down, you know, got on my knees and accepted the Lord into my heart. And, um, you know, shortly thereafter, my parents saved up all their money and were able to put me into a little Christian school. And um, in the midst of the Christian school, not worth going into all the details, but I was deeply wounded um, by some of the people uh, in that Christian school. And right, people are all, we are all messed up human imperfection. I mean, we are just, we are messed up humans, right? So, but for me in my young age, I really took the church as um, those people or believing in God as those people. So I threw the baby out with the bathwater. And from then on my life, going from junior high into high school, um, I was living a super crazy life of sin, drugs, uh, partying, drinking, women. Like it was a horrible, you know, the pursuit of all these things that, and was really hardening my heart. And it was interesting because... Um, in my later high school years, a gentleman invited me to go to the National Prayer Breakfast in Washington, D.C. <clears throat> and, you know, I, I was really curious of why I was, you know, I knew Jesus from being saved, and I knew the good news, if you will, or briefly about it, and I had an encounter at a young age with Jesus. But for me living this crazy life of sin and then being invited to the National Prayer Breakfast, I was like, hmm, this really sparked my curiosity. Yeah. So being invited to the National Prayer Breakfast, I went there and I had a meeting with a gentleman named Doug Coe. And Doug actually handed me this little black book. You know, it said the life of Jesus on it. It was a gospel harmony. I was like, huh, interesting. And something in my head told me, you better hang on to this. So I put it in my back pocket, went through the National Prayer Breakfast, and actually shortly thereafter ended up moving to Asia. Moved to Hong Kong to start our family business over in Asia Pacific. And my life of sin that I was living here in the United States and my real truthfully and shamefully, my pursuit of sin, um, really, I fled from it, trying to run from it, from going to Asia. And it ended up just getting 10 times worse. Things really in my life continued to deteriorate. I pursued all these, you know, horrible things in life, materialism. Um, you know, the drinking and the drugs and and everything. I mean, it was just a, a horrible time in my life, a really dark time in my life. And it was interesting that I kept that black book with me that said the life of Jesus, which is a gospel harmony. 
And the Holy Spirit pursued me through that book. I would be, I would have a horrible night of just doing horrible things. And I would wake up in the morning and in my heart, I would feel, Josh, read just a page, read two pages, read just a paragraph. And I would, I would open it up and I would read a paragraph and then I would go back to living this life of sin. It's interesting how the Holy Spirit is relentless at pursuing us. And I just encourage everybody who's listening, you know, pay attention to that. I mean, it's so it's so important. So I was actually, because of my time at the National Prayer Breakfast, I was invited to go to Japan for their National Prayer Breakfast. And when I was there, I'll never forget this very elderly um, Japanese man looked at me and I kind of told my testimony and I was still living this life of sin. And I said, I don't even know why I'm here. I'm living this crazy life of sin. And he said, Josh, you're not here because of the man that you are, but because of the man you will be. And so it was just like the Holy Spirit just pursuing me. It's like, okay, I really need to get back into the word. I re Who really is this man of Jesus? Who really is he? And who was he? And who is he now? So long story short, after my time in Asia, I had to flee Asia for my life. I came back to the United States and uh, I said, you know what? This pursuit of materialism and just having fun in life and pursuing money and partying and all the things that go with that, it almost got me killed. So I'm done. I'm 100% in, 100% out kind of guy. And so I just fled the scene and I said, Lord, I'm 100% yours. I'm all in. Show me if you're real. I want you to show up in my life. And he really began to show up in my heart and transform my life from that time forward. I spent about five years just purifying my heart, spending time with him, repairing relationships in my family, um, repairing relationships with all the, I, I, I left so many, so much destruction in my wake before. And so spending time just repairing that um, and really just getting to know Jesus. I mean, who, who really was he and who really is he today? I mean, that was a deep question that I was really looking for. So in that journey, um, I really became to became, you know, solid in my walk with the Lord and and really said, you know, began to strategically study the Bible and really develop a passion for for reading the Word of God in the Holy Bible. And um it was shortly thereafter in 2019 when I'm sitting in a in a room with a couple pastors and we're just discussing life and kind of reflecting and one of the pastors asked the original gentleman who invited me to the prayer breakfast when I was in 2019, oh, hey, are there any more of those little black books that were the life of Jesus? And instantly in my mind, I go, wow, that was a powerful tool that the Holy Spirit used in my life to reel me back. And he said, unfortunately, Doug, the gentleman who gave you the book, Doug Coe, who gave you the book, he's with Jesus now. And he was the one who was printing them. So they're no longer around. And that was the first time in my life when I, it wasn't audible, but it was in my heart. It was like, Josh, this is what you will do. And I was like, what a book? Like in this digital age when, you know, I mean, it made no sense to me. It was just this crazy calling right on my life that I couldn't even, I'm like, this is crazy. You know, the Lord had blessed me in 2018 with an incredible wife that I did not deserve. And so I went back and talked to my wife. I'm like, this is what the Lord put on my heart. What do you think? And we agreed to actually do it. And so, you know, God's timing is perfect, right? So in 2020, we're just getting our first copies of, of this gospel harmony book. And the rest is history, right? God's really using it um, to really share his good news, the gospel. That's Absolutely, in a mighty way, in a mighty yeah. way. Yeah, it's wild. And and the positioning, you know, you, you mentioned, you know, just talking from a from a business guy to business guy, right? It's it's the this is the book. It's a little small book that fits in your pocket. Yeah, I love it. Great. And um, you know, the book, it the positioning of it was really interesting for me because living this life of sin, and many of us we know, right? People are are not walking with the Lord. And so if you hand them a 3,500-page Bible 
and say, well, yeah. take this huge book, kind of start towards the back. There's four letters that are kind of the same, but written with, you know, by these guys who are Jesus's friends. Like it's not very um, straightforward to just dive in as somebody who's new to the faith or right. critical of and it's, religion. It's a bit overpowering, that big book, without advice and counseling. But this thing, I'll tell you, I've given this to men who have immediately fell in love, fell, fallen in love with it and passed on others to, to other people. But one of the things they said to me that was so incredible, when they opened it to test it, to read it, the first page caught them where it says here, you may wonder how this got in your hands. And they started to read and they said, you know, I've been sold out for God all my life, but this has brought me so tangibly closer to Jesus Christ because I can feel him every time I give it to someone else. I know that when it's it's my journey into life and I'm offering someone else a journey to life every time I give them this. Praise God. That's it's, awesome. it's wonderful. It's I wonderful. love it. It's a, It's an amazing tool. Right. For us as believers. Right. Exactly. You know, so, sometimes it can be intimidating or difficult to um, to evangelize or tell people about Jesus. And this is a great tool just to to loved ones or friends or colleagues or teammates or the guy who's coming to change the filter on your air conditioning unit. I mean, anybody who you come across. Little Raffaello, who fixed the ice machine last week, got it in <laughs> Spanish. He got it from me in Spanish. I love it. I love it. You know, it's just a great way to evangelize. It's easy to evangelize. It's easy to tell people about Jesus. And when you give them something nice and premium, right. they're not going to throw it away. And just like me, you know, I took it and I put it in my back pocket and I kept this with me for years. And it wasn't until the seed was ready that the Holy Spirit began pinging my heart and I began to read it. So you never know that if you give it to somebody, it could be tomorrow or it could be in years that they pick it up and they read it and they have an encounter with Jesus. Okay, so those of you who are watching this that are wondering, what are they talking about? I haven't gotten there yet. In the book, you're going to find out, but Josh is going to tell you also, it's all part of his massive plan called plusnothing.com. The and Lord's massive plan. The Lord's <laughs> massive plan, which he filtered through him. And he's putting his hands and his feet to the to the grindstone and making it happen. He's listening. He's adhered to God's call on his life. And he's making this happen in a big way. And these books are available currently in English and in Spanish. And how many more translations are on the way? We got a bunch more translations in the works. Tons of them. Yeah. So we're really excited about that. And, we're and have... I, we're going to have all the the information where to contact them and where to find this book and later on. You won't have to make notes now. It'll be all in in the story notes. So yep. And and story. really for the for the listeners and, and viewers, like what is this? Right. It's called a gospel harmony. So it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John rearranged and put in a chronological order with the repetitive stories dropped out. So if there's a parable in Matthew and Luke. And the parable in Matthew is a little bit more robust than the parable in Luke. Then the parable in Matthew is used for the gospel harmony and the one in Luke right. drop. Right. So it's all the stories in the gospel rearranged and put in a chronological order. So it reads like a story. And so that is really the what a gospel harmony is. And that's why it's nice and thin. And, and it's really to our target market, right? New believers, non-believers, people critical of the faith. It's designed just to look like a high-end moleskin, right? So yeah. it's not intimidating for, for a new believer. It doesn't look like a religious book or a Bible, right? It's And right when you open it up, there's a letter that was written by myself and some other gentlemen. It's a little bit of my testimony. And it's signed, which I love how you opened, Carl, with the podcast, Fellow Traveler, right? right? Because we're all on this journey of life, and and we just find ourselves in these peculiar situations where the Lord meets us out of nowhere. And it's just so exciting to see him moving right now. Like we've been talking about, I mean, God's on the move. So and it's there's no doubt about that. Yeah. And we, we started to talk about something before we started the show. We had a little chat before the show started and you rightfully said evil is on the move. Yep. But God is on the move as well. 
Absolutely. I mean, we have nothing but to look at the news or listen to experiences and stories from people that we know about what's going on in this world. And we know that evil is on the, on the march. There is no doubt about it. If yep. we don't do our share to counteract that, then it's a, it's a long, tough fight. But we know yep. that we know the end of the story because we've read Revelation. We know how it ends in the end. We Amen. win, folks, but we got to do yep. our share. Yep. Yep. Yep, that's really good. And, and um, I, I just think that the right now, because of the current situation of our world, right, COVID really shook everything that people held as true, you know, and, and that they grasped onto and that they, they knew was sturdy and it just shook the foundation of everybody. It shook up everything. And then, you know, you have all these other things that are coming from left, right and center to, to everybody that's that's distracting and people are kind of grasping for for truth, solid rock, a solid foundation to right. to to put their feet on. Right. And so I say all that to say that what what I feel in my heart, what we're seeing through um the church, through outreaches, through just globally, is people are hungry for truth. And this is the truth. Right. Absolutely. Jesus and what he did for us on the cross is the truth. And it's done. He paid the ultimate price for us. And through grace, we are saved, not by works. And I think it's so important for people to hear that now. And it just it allows people to just to just rest in that truth and and have, give thanks to Jesus for, for what he did for us. And and people are hungry. The field is ripe right now. So if you're ever in a position where it's like, I feel like I can, I want to reach out to this, my neighbor or my friend or this colleague, this is a great opportunity to, to put scripture in front of them. This is scripture. This is the easy reading version of the Bible. It's published by the Bible League International. And um, I mean, it's, it's scripture, right? So if and his word does not return without void. So we need to get people's eyes to be reading this and let the Holy Spirit do the work. And I want to just come back to one other thing. These are available through your website, uh, but it's very it's made very clear on this website. You should never restrain from getting the books to send them out because of cost. They will be sent to you free of cost, not even shipping. Correct. Everything will be free in all the quantities that you need. For those of us who can afford to support this effort, I encourage you, make a contribution to support the effort. Keep it going as much as possible. But for those who need the books free of charge, they are free of charge. 100% no strings attached. And, I, and if the Lord puts it on your heart to pay it forward and make a donation so Absolutely. that others can get the book for free, that's an answer to prayer. And we're shipping these all around the world, Middle East, all across Europe, all throughout South America and Asia. And we're just flooding North America with the gospel. So, um, and, and, we've, and we've just made a connection, I think, that will result in very heavy contact in Africa. Yes, I love it. That's phenomenal. And any any organizations, right? Many people have a friend who has a missions organization or a church that they attend and they do a lot of outreach or a feeding program or a prison ministry or a nursing home ministry or a rehab center. I mean, th the uses and the ability for all of us, every listener to reach out into our network and say, we have a tool that's free of charge that we can tell people of who really was this Jesus in Nazareth? Who really was he? And who really is he today? Like, we got to get the word out. We got to get the word out. Absolutely. Because the other guy is doing his share to diminish it. So we have to 100%. do our share. Yep. We You're right on. So, you know, uh, I've interviewed a lot of pastors' children on this show uh -huh. who had very similar testimonies to yours. <laughs> <laughs> they did they did the whole backlash stuff and came back in a vengeance and strong. And one of them, particular one that I know very well. He's the son of an evangelist who was a world evangelist who has since passed. And now he is taking up the cross and doing the same thing. And he has wow. a huge giant rallies all over the world. I mean, 
half a million people show up at a time. Uh -huh. And he's going to start handing out your book. <laughs> oh, praise God. All the glory to him. And we yeah. see that be in the back of the book. And, and you know, many times I, 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 my wife and I talk about it. We pray about it. Hey, we don't want this to, we don't want anybody even knowing who's printing the books, you know, but when the Lord gives us an opportunity to come onto a podcast and, and tell people that this tool is available yeah. to you to evangelize, right. right? And it's easy to evangelize and it's the truth and people are hungry for it. We come on and we're honored. So I'm so honored to be on your podcast. This is an incredible, I mean, it's a, it's a gift. Right. But we don't want nobody knows who's printing these. We don't want anybody to know who's printing these. We don't want any name connected to this other than the name of Jesus, because that's what it's all about. Absolutely. I can attest to that, folks. It took a lot of digging to find it. <laughs> <laughs> we, my my good friend, Jim Roberts and I, Jim is an attorney and he he knows how to ferret in and find things. And <laughs> he, he was able to find Josh. And we had this wonderful conversation a few weeks ago, and I'm so proud to have you and honored to have you on this podcast. Because the I honor is mine. I believe the the Lord uses us in our, our own way, you know, to, to do meaningful things. And I'm very, very proud. And now I, I want to, I'd be remiss of, uh, I want to go back to the fact that you're a married man. You have two beautiful children. Yes, you know, you, you, you have the joy of, of family and discipling to your own children to raise them up in a way that they can be part of God's world as well. And you have a very, you're in addition to a very accomplished businessman. I won't thank you any more than that. But uh, and, and I'll say this that is for, for everybody listening, that is a perfect snapshot of Jesus's redemption, right? Because you know, I deserve to be dead and in jail. That's what I deserve. Right? I know we were brothers. <laughs> we, we have some. <laughs> and so, and that's that's the honest truth, right? So many of us, and maybe some people who are listening to this now, you feel that way about you. But God is good, and Jesus is good, and He uses all of the things and the mess that we've created in our lives just for amazing, beautiful things. And so. You know, I just encourage you, if you're questioning, is he real? You know, is he really who he says he is? Ask him. Ask him to show up, and he will. He absolutely will. He changed will. my life. He absolutely will. And I want to also tell you that the Holy Spirit is relentless. Yes. Sometimes you think, well, I can ignore that until tomorrow. And he taps you on the shoulder. You say, well, maybe next week. And he twists your arm a little bit. And if you don't pay attention, he's going to break your leg. You better pay attention. He's going to get your attention. I had a stroke that could contest to that. <laughs> Do it the easy way because he's coming one way or the other. <laughs> That's great. I love it. I want to give you the opportunity to say anything you want. You're on. You're on now for whatever you, you want to say. You've been pretty much saying it throughout this whole show. But anything you'd like to say, I would love the world to get that contagious smile that you have within themselves, <laughs> because I know where it comes from. So <laughs> I'll tell you that this contagious smile is not um, of my own. It's the joy of the Lord, right? Because I'm still a messed up man, right? I still fail every day. I still am not the best husband that I want to be and the not, the, not the best dad that I want to be. Um, I, I still sin, right? I still fall down. And every day, you know, I, I do my best to get down on my knees and say, Lord, I'm just messed up. I am a sinful guy and I'm doing my very best to try to follow you. And I'm not good at it, but I'm doing my best. And and I just encourage all of us who are listening to come together with, with that posture, right, of just we are all messed up sinful humans and we're going to continue to screw up. But if we turn our eyes on Jesus and if we focus on him and you know build a relationship with him try to draw near to him ask him to draw near to us and pray for wisdom and discernment through the holy spirit i truly believe that um a move of jesus a move of the lord a move of the holy spirit is coming and we are called to be his hands and feet so if you feel it it 
on your heart right now, go to the website, plusnothing.com. You can order as many as you want free of charge. You can send me an email. My email is the email address on there. Hello at plusnothing.com. I'll send you a pallet. I'll send you as many books as you're willing and able to distribute. We need to get the good word out about Jesus and about what he can do and what about what he has done for us. It's already done. So we need to get the word out because people are hungry for it right now. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, as you were speaking, I was reminded of a man that I knew years ago who's now with God. And uh, he was with the... Um, Patton's group in the Battle of the Bulge. And he wow. told the story, he told me the story once that they came into a village and they were going door to door against fighting against the Germans. And they came into this church that had been bombed out and one wall was standing. And on that wall that was standing was the risen Christ. But his his arms had been blown off by a bomb. And around his neck was a sign that some GI must have put there because it was printed in English. And it said, I have no hands but yours. Wow. That's incredible. So these are our hands, folks. And these are our tools, folks. And this is what we're called to do. I love it. Okay. So, Josh, it's been a pleasure having you here with me today. And I am forever grateful for you. To, to the honor's mine. Forever. So, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we do this show. Every Wednesday, we come up with a new guest. We give you a new show. Wonderful guests like this, people who along the way in life have been touched and motivated and changed their lives. And they are willing to tell the story so you can do the same. I know it's happened in my life. Other people have imported into me the inspiration and the motivation of something that changed them and it helped to change me. And it made me a better person for it. I encourage you, reach out to others. Do the same. If you have a story to tell, Come on the show. Write me. We'll talk about it. You can be on the show. I know that you have your own story. Everybody has a unique story, and no one can tell it like you can. Write it down. Give it to your loved ones, your family. Share it with people you know. Because if you don't, when it's too late, it's too late. The world will lose that wisdom. Share it today. And I tell you one of the things that I tell you every time I'm on this show. I know I'm a big blustery guy from Brooklyn, but I'm going to tell you again. Love each other. Tell someone you love them today. Pass the gift of love from one to another. And God's blessing. I love you. Josh, I love you. Love you, brother. Thank you very much. Thank for you offer. so much for being God on the show. You. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye.